Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. Without further delay, let's get right into it, shall we? Father, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that um, you put me to sleep last night and woke me up this morning, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for your confidence in me, Lord God, to, to deliver the word whenever you give me opportunity. Thank you for the opportunities, Lord God. <clears throat> Thank you for the strength and the power, Lord. God, I pray you will clear my mind right now, clear our minds, all of our minds and our hearts, Lord God. Allow us to hear what you're saying. Allow us to see what you're showing us, God. Allow us to receive it, to retain it, and to relay it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, use me as the vessel that you put the word in. Use me as the messenger who delivers that word, Lord God. And God, above all things, let your will be done this morning. Not my will, but your will, God. We know that, we know that you'll work it all together for our good, Lord God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. All right, today's scripture is coming from... Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 19. <clears throat> Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. <laughs> Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality. <clears throat> Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. 
Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. May the Lord God bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. <clears throat> We are instructed in the word of God to love the children of God. When Jesus say, uh, uh, love your brethren, your brothers, what have you, have love for one another. When he's saying have love for one another, he's talking to the believers. Whenever it says the brethren or the brothers, you know what I'm saying? He's talking about uh, the children of God. You know, don't get it twisted now. Everybody's not children of God. But see, he makes it sweet. Where he tells us to not love only the children of God, but to love others as well. He said, love the children of God, love our neighbor, whether they be children of God or not. He said, uh, love the stranger. Uh, God said, love the stranger because you were a stranger in the land of Egypt. And, you know, I looked out on you, so I'm going to look out on the strangers as well. And he also says, love our enemies. He says that, uh, uh, um, <clears throat> he said that in the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, I want to say it's around uh, in Matthew chapter Six, I think Matthew chapter six, around chapter six, he said, uh, maybe chapter seven, but it's, it's in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew five, six, and seven. It says, uh, Matthew chapter five, chapter six, and chapter seven, the Sermon on the Mount. He says, love your enemies. You know what I'm saying as well. And he said in more than one place, you know, more than one place. You know what I'm saying. And so it's not like it's one simple time we'll see this. Love your enemy, or love your neighbor, love your stranger, love the brethren. It's, it's all throughout the. It's all throughout the New Testament when Jesus speaks about these things, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And also looking in the Old Testament as well. Um, so it's not a coincidence that Paul says to love without hypocrisy, right here in verse of nine, then immediately in the same verse tells us to hate evil and cling to good. This one verse can sell the whole debate on what love is because people don't know what love is. They say love is love. Yeah, love is love, but let me tell you what love is, though. Love is love, but this is what love is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even Paul, and, and, um, and this is Paul saying it right here. I call John the love doctor, because John talk about love so much. You know what I'm saying? And even uh, in the in the in, in St. John, even in the first epistle of John, he's still going on about love. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's the love doctor. But um, Paul right here says something about love. Love, he says, let, let it be without hypocrisy. Then he describes uh, the attributes of, of being a, a, a Christian and being a godly man or a godly woman. Also, Paul gives a whole chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 on love, you know, but he sums his all up in one. John talk about it all throughout, you know what I'm saying? His epistle, I think, you know, you know, he dibbling, dabbling and all that, but it's a lot about that. And, um, uh, <clears throat> This verse can can sell the debate on what love is as long as the Holy Bible is the standard of discerning good and evil. Not discerning love, discerning good and evil. Because if you use the Holy Bible to discern love, then you can say, uh, when it tell me to love him or to love her, the Holy Bible has to discern good and evil as well. Because when it's when the Bible says love without hypocrisy when when paul tells us love without hypocrisy that means can't be a hypocrite can't say one thing and and and, and 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 do another can't believe one thing and do another and so if it's telling us and we saying yes i love the lord and the lord say if you love me keep my commandments well that's hypocrisy if um if it say if you say uh uh yes i love i Yes, I love him or I love her, but then you're doing something that's 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 sinful, uh, and 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 claiming it to be love. Guess what? It's not love because love without hypocrisy. Just the the Bible must be your standard between and it helps you discern between what is good and evil in order for you to love. You know what I'm saying? You can't. You might think here we go. Okay, here we go. Say somebody did something to your uh to your child. Somebody did something to your child. Could have been something small, 
could have been something big. Could have been something that lasts forever. Could have even, uh, ooh, I don't wish nothing bad on you. It, could, it just could have been something terrible, like something happened on Law and Order SVU. You know what I'm saying? Raped or killed or or kidnapped or tortured or, or, or abused or something. You know, somebody did something to your child. You would say it's in love to avenge them or to repay them or to pay them or, you, the, or, or to get payback or make up for what they did to your child, right? Wrong. The Bible's the Bible gives us a uh, 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 specific instructions on on revenge. It says Ven re re revenge is for God, and so and, and and so and anything anything that you set your mind or hand to do against the other person, it would be considered evil. You know what I'm saying? And so you can't say I'm going to show that I love my child by committing evil against the person who hurt my child because that's hypocrisy. That's being a hypocrite. I'm going to show that I love someone by hurting someone else. That's being a hypocrite. I'm going to show that I love, I'm a, I'm a man. I'm going to show that I love this man by committing some type of sexual immorality with that man. Wrong. That's hypocrisy. It doesn't work like that. I'm going to show that I love my, uh, my child and I'm not going to let him be without diapers or shoes or baby milk. So I'm going to steal some baby milk or steal some diapers or shoes. No, that's hypocrisy. Love must be rooted in Christ. Christ says, if you love me, you keep my commands. See, and I, you keep my command. And a lot, and yeah, and I'm not going to get off on that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm dibbling down and all the way down into the bottom of this as well. But I also want to say this. We can take it to Jesus and he'll solve the problem for us. If it's, if, especially if it's something dealing with finances. Um, I, oh Lord. <clears throat> I was talking to a woman. <clears throat> it wasn't this year. It probably wasn't even last year. It probably wasn't even 25, 23. Probably could have been 22 or 21 or a couple of years before that. But it was, it, it was, it was, I was talking to her and she was saying that she was in need. And I, and I, and I, and I, I probably mentioned this before. I said, well, uh, what's the church saying? You know, if a person tell me they in need, I'm going to say, what the church say? Is the church uh, rejecting your need? And they say, I ain't been in church. Well, that's your problem. You've cut yourself off from the children of God and expect God to work through somebody else on your behalf. Because it's definitely God that's going to provide something that you need. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, and I don't want to get off on that, but, but yeah, uh, <clears throat> It's God who provides, but what I'm but what I'm saying is <clears throat> we we have God has to be the standard. So you know what I'm saying? We can't we can't move away from God and then try to determine what what our uh, what how to live this life outside of God because we can't. We cannot live this life outside of God. Uh the Holy Bible must be the standard of discerning what is good and evil. Then we can see clearly how God wants us to live. Oh, I don't know. I don't know why I was out off on that rant. Yeah, because I was talking about just three things here. Yeah, so when a person has financial problems, they can go to the church. But if they cut themselves off from church, they cut themselves off from the people of God, from God helping them. You can help them through somebody else. But why intentionally move yourself out of that? When uh, when somebody hurt, when when somebody did something to you or hurt you or something, uh, you know what I'm saying? You the 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 church can give you advice or and offer protection <laughs> against evil they can they can get involved and put the police with law enforcement in the neighborhood and all that stuff the church is here for our edification for our benefit for our strength for our uh uh, uh gaining education and knowledge and power that's what god uh, put the body of christ here for for to help us not for us to do something else not for us to say i don't want to be like them like these whoo, ignorant pastors on youtube talking about the church whack and siren don't be like the church now don't be like the the people who pretending to be the church you know who the church is man the people who the church is not the building the people who 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 show that they following jesus that's the church the people who are attached to the head jesus the, jesus is the head and we attach. We might be an arm. We might be a pinky toe. We might be a little piece of hair on his back. But guess what? We are attached to him. We are in him. And so, and we and we don't live outside of him. 
when you rip us off of him, we fall to the ground and we gone. Spiritually, if we if you take us away from Christ, we are spiritually dead. And so the only way you can love without hypocrisy is if you are joined to Christ Jesus. The only way you can uh live your you live what it say, live abundant life is if your life is in Christ Jesus. Um and the Holy Bible helps us to discern between good and evil. So we can love without hypocrisy. Uh the Holy Bible also if we can if we can set the Bible as our standard, we can see clearly how God wants us to live. We see advice. Advice. The Bible has advice. We see advice on working hard, being passionate while serving the Lord. In this verse right here and in other places, we see um uh mm, I think it's first Corinthians 14. I'm not sure. <clears throat> I'm not sure though way he says, um, mm, Man, that might be a little all thing be done decently and in order. 14, 41. I'm not sure. Um, but we see that if it ain't for God, if it ain't for Jesus, if it ain't for the kingdom, it's in vain. People might say, no, nah, it ain't in vain. It gave me $2 million. Man, them $2 million is even in vain. See what I'm saying? Even them $2 million is in vain if you ain't going to do something for the Lord with it. No, you know what I'm saying? Even if you acquired that money illegally in the past, you have an opportunity right now to 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 use it for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. God say, give it back or donate it. You gotta let God tell you what to do with it. You can even you can even give to what He tells you to give with. You know what I'm saying? If in your state of repentance, you know you can. Doesn't matter what you did or what you used to do. What matters is what you do now. No matter what you did or what you used to do, what matters is what you do now. I know I'm going all around the world with you. Look, stick with me. <clears throat> um, the working for the Lord, being passionate about something that we're doing, but using it for the Lord, for the glory of God. I talked yesterday. Use what you use what you got to get what you want. If you want to glorify God, <clears throat> use what God has already given you. We see that Scripture tells us to uh, to 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 be humble and to not place ourselves on a pedestal above anybody else. And that's <clears throat> and that's because uh, Jesus Christ laid Himself down and allowed uh, us to be brought in you know what if he wouldn't have brought, allowed us to be brought in we wouldn't be saved we wouldn't be anything we'd be nothing we'd be on our way to the burning lake of fire we'd be on our way to what they call hell fire and so so uh it, it tells us not to be proud you want to know why i say associate with the humble because pride god resists the proud people if you got pride if you think it is your doing your power your might your strength guess what God going to oppose that. The scripture says God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So when, when Paul and somebody telling us to be humble, it's for our own good. Um, help the church build up God's kingdom and glorify God by being generous. You got your, I just said about the $2 million. You got your wealth, your whatever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it says distribute to the needs of the saints. And I love this. I love this part of the scripture because <clears throat> I give to the poor. Not questioning whether or not they're saved. I gave somebody a dub yesterday. Oh, it's about to be seven more five. My alarm about to go off. I gave somebody twenty dollars yesterday a dub. Twenty dollars yesterday, man. And uh, they said they need some gas to get back to, to get back to uh, Kansas City. I'm, you know what I'm saying? About a two hour, two hour twenty minute drive from where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Uh, where 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 we at at the gas station? And then so um, he get the twenty, get back in the van with the people. I'm popping gas. I see and walk up to somebody else. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, man, $20 will get you two hours. <laughs> they try to do something else. You know, $20 will get you two. $20 can drive worth the gas can get you on a two-hour drive if that's what you're trying to do. But I gave it to them. And I ain't saying nothing else about it. I said, I, I wish I had to just put, pump the gas for them and told them and see if they go head on. You know what I'm saying? But like, I give to people not thinking about if they, if they, if they, um, Got ulterior motives or not? And what I'm what I'm saying is this part about the saints distributing to the needs of the saints. Now, I ain't talking about giving to strangers or people you don't know. I'm talking about helping the saints in whatever they trying to do. And the saints are the children of God. We're called the saints. The saints are the people of God, and I'm talking about helping them do what they need to do for the kingdom of God. If you see they doing something for the kingdom of God, uh, uh, uh give them something. That's what I'm saying. Distributing to the, if they need. 
If they're in a need and they're trying to do something to glorify God, to, 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 to get somebody saved, to win some souls, to preach about Jesus Christ, give, 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 because that's what you're here for. That's what you're here for. And I love this part about distributing to the needs of the saints. It don't say help that person over there start their business because they want to uh, make a playground for all the kids to have fun. You know, it don't say that. I don't mind giving. That's why I told you I give. But I, but the, the uh, whoo, no, I'm, I'm, I can't get them out. The word of God, love without hypocrisy. If you see somebody doing something that, that is not in accordance with with Jesus Christ's commands, I'm saying don't give to it. Now, I ain't say if it's uh, something else different. I'm saying nothing wrong with helping to build a playground. Don't get Hey, I'm not against building playgrounds. I remember we used to have spin around the miracle around. I don't see that anymore. I don't see kids spinning over miracle around fast as they can and jumping on and getting hit on the side. Bam! Like we used to do when we were little. I don't, they, I guess they're not tough enough for stuff like that. But yeah, give to that. But I'm talking about uh, somebody that's that's trying to do something and they, and they're opposing the kingdom of God. I say don't give to them. See, if they if they if they oppose the kingdom of God, if they against Jesus, don't give to them. I say take that money that you have, go give it to somebody that you see is trying to do something for the kingdom of God. I just saw something that uh, T.J. Shabazz put. He said it's sad that people are using everything to glorify themselves or to build up their platform. Versus talking about the Lord Jesus. If somebody's trying to build up their platform, trying to get a name for themselves, forget them. I don't give them nothing. If they're trying to build up the name of Jesus, give them all you got. You know, that's how I look at that. You know, I not not literally give them all you got, but if you got something to give, you say, I want to give something. Distribute to the needs of the saints, not to the needs of the ones who are on the opposite side of the rim. And we don't know who all is saved, so that's why. I give without questioning whether or not they're saved. But when it comes to some to people, you can clearly see, and they are not for us. Not Jesus said, whoever is not against us is for us. If you can see that they're not against us, give. You know what I'm saying? Hey, give. If you can see that they're not against us. <clears throat> but if you see that they're against you, don't, don't give them nothing. Don't touch it. If you're not sure, go and give anyway. The Lord will bless you. Giving, if you're not sure what they're doing, just give. But you see that they're against the kingdom of God. If they are against Jesus, don't give them anything. Distribute to the, the needs of the saints. Uh, <clears throat> be generous. Glorify God. We are even told to forgive and let God repay the ones who hurt us. To live at peace with everyone if we have the opportunity. Live at peace with everybody if you have the opportunity. Paul says, as much as all depends, as much as it depends on you, try to live peaceably with all men. He said, if you have the opportunity to squash some beef, do it. You want to know why? Because vengeance is God's. <laughs> he going to repay. He going to repay. He going to do all of that there. And so by you saying, now nah, I'm going to, oh, here we go. By you saying, I'm not going to forgive, guess what? You're disobeying the commandments. Hey, Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. I mean, you. I don't say you're disobeying. You're out of line with the scriptures. I'm going to say that. Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. And in other places, he also says, forgive. Jesus tell you to forgive. Now, see, this is how I look at uh, the commands. It ain't just them 10. It ain't just those two. It's not just those 613. Everything that the Lord tells me to do is a commandment from the Lord. Why? Because what he says out of his mouth is, is, is make it a command. Now, if he, there are the indicatives and imperatives. If he's just saying, you are beloved or you are my son, that's not a command. But if he say, go to sleep, that's a command. See what I'm saying? If he's telling me to do something, I consider it a command from the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Oh, command, a commandment, whatever you want to say. Any type of instruction that the Lord gives me, I consider those authoritative and I must do those. So he tells you to forgive. So if you don't forgive, if you want to hold on to beef and not and not live at peace with other people, guess what? You're out of line with God's will. He wants you to be at peace. 
with the people who uh who trying to cause a ruckus or trying to come up against you and fight against you and stuff. Squash the beef if you can. Is what he's saying. Um. Um. All of these things are rooted in love. See, I, I got I jumped down to this from the beginning. All this stuff here in this passage is rooted in love. All these things are rooted in love, and love is rooted in Christ. Love is rooted in Christ. There's no, there's no greater love. There's no deeper love. There's no stronger love than the love of Christ that He did. He, he uh, greater love has none than this. Then somebody will lay down their life for their friends. We are willing to say, "Yeah, man, I die for my mother. I die for my children. My father. My." parents my grandparents my brother my sister would you die for your friends would you die for you would you die for somebody who you know was gonna be was gonna uh, uh mock you and curse you could get and, and you know you know what i'm saying until they see that you're real after you die if you die after you die till they see that how 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 much you love them after you die See, but that's what Jesus did. Believe me, some of those people who mocked him and ridiculed him and hit him and spit on him or whatever they did, killed him. Some of those people, some of those people who contributed to Jesus' death on the cross turned, turned their lives over to the Lord and were saved and are saved. Some of those, so Jesus died for them. Can you do that? Can you die for somebody who treated you bad right now? Like they were treating Jesus bad right then, he still died for them. He didn't say, "All y'all, all y'all out there, you're not saved." He said, "Father, forgive them; they know not what they do." That's what he said. Forgive. You need to forgive them too, because you know not they know not what they do. Everything is rooted in love, and love is rooted in Christ. Christ Jesus says, "If you love me, you will obey my commandments." When we desire to obey Jesus and attempt to obey, two things, and, not or, when we desire to obey Jesus and attempt to obey Jesus, that's two things together. If you want to do it and you go and try to do it, guess what? You're going to succeed. But you got to want to do it because when you fail, if you want to do it, you're going to continue to try and try again. That's how we are. We continue to fail and fall. Following these, this list of 10 things in these verses, don't make you saved. Following this list of things in these verses, just uh, trying to follow these thing, these ten things in this list of verses right here, don't make you saved. But it shows that you you're behaving like a Christian or living like a Christian. That's all that is. This is a, these are Christians live. That's what. The, in fact, uh, I guess Thomas Nelson got, did a New King James. He labeled it behaving like a Christian or whatever. And so trying to do these things and desiring to do these things, trying to obey Jesus and desiring to obey Jesus is how you fulfill all the law. It shows that you are walking down the right path. And this stuff right here, it's not grievous if you want to please Jesus. Um, at first John, the epistle of John, he says, um, if we, if we 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 this is our this is our love that we that we will keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. That's what John says. His commands are not grievous, and so they are not grievous as long as we try to follow what Jesus wants us to do. His, obeying the commands are not grievous because we just want to please him. We just want to make him happy. We just want to make him proud of us. We just want to make the Lord God Almighty say, "Well done, my good and faithful servant." That's what we want to do. And, and having the desire and attempting to satisfy Jesus, to please Jesus, is the right path to go. And all this other stuff will be fulfilled if you're in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I feel like it was kind of lengthy, Lord God, but uh, I believe you got your point across, Lord. I believe uh, the people have heard what you want them to hear, Lord. Now, God, help us to keep it on this day, Lord. Help us to take it with us help us to use it for your glory lord god help us to uh to to remember it later on god lord god bring it back to our remembrance god and uh help us to meditate on it while we're laying in our bed god so that we see what you're actually saying lord and what you actually want us to do and how you want us to live lord god if there's anything lord that you didn't want me to say god remove it take it out lord take it out of our hearts and minds and if there's anything that i've uh neglected to 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 include lord that i've neglected to mention lord 
I pray you add it later on in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory, Lord. And we ask that you will lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, Father. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. All right. That's it for Morning Cup of Jesus. If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you.